Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you an in-depth look at how to use the alignment tool in GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.6 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. I'll be working with these photos for today's tutorial as well as these shapes to demonstrate how this alignment tool works and how it can be useful for your projects. But of course before we get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always we have tons of GIMP video and tech tutorials on here so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy and you can get a huge discount on this via the discount link in the description and you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on patreon and get some awesome gimp extras in return and of course I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video so the alignment tool in GIMP is pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to align objects in GIMP and you can align those objects which are called targets using a variety of settings. So you can align them to different parts of your image or you can align them to other objects in your image. And we're gonna get into that of course. But you can access this alignment tool via your toolbox right here on the left side of GIMP or you can hit the shortcut key Q on your keyboard. And you'll see once you have the alignment tool selected, your mouse pointer turns into this almost like crosshair looking thing with a hand in the bottom right corner. And so as I mentioned, you are aligning what is called a target layer. So in this case, I've created three separate objects and each object I have cropped the layer to the contents within the layer, which is the object itself. So let me just demonstrate that real quick. I'll create a fourth object here. So object four, hit enter. I'll grab my selection tool. Actually, let me this time do an ellipse select. And let me uncheck the aspect ratio. So I'm just drawing this real quick. And I'll just choose, let's go with a greenish color here. And I'll fill this in with my bucket fill tool. All right, so here we have an object and it's on its own layer. So right now the layer is the entire size of the composition. I'll hit Control Shift A to select none with that selection. All I did was I went to layer, crop to content, and that'll crop the size of my layer down to the size of the object that's within the layer. So that's all I did there. So now I'll grab my alignment tool again, and I'm gonna click on the object one layer. And I mentioned that there are target layers, so the target is going to be the object that's going to be aligned or the layer that's gonna be aligned. So if I click on here, that's going to turn this layer into the target. And you can always tell that because there are squares here in the corner of my object. So I just have a single object selected here. You can actually select multiple objects using the alignment tool. And all you have to do is hold shift and then click on that other object you want to select. So in this case, I just selected this blue object. I can actually select all of these objects separately. So now you'll see we have all four of these objects selected. And once I have these objects selected, I can align them in various ways. So if I click on this align drop down here, you could choose how you're aligning this. So if I align to the first item here, we'll just use that as our first example. That's going to align everything to the black square because that is the first thing that I selected. So the first target item you select is going to be your first item. And if I click any of the align buttons here, it's going to align all of these objects relative to our first item. So our first example here is it's going to align left edge of target. And what that means is it's going to align all of our objects to the far left side of our square here. So I'll go ahead and click that and you'll see everything aligns to that far left edge. The second option is align center of target and if I click on that it's going to align everything horizontally to our square. So you'll see everything shifted over and because our square is in the center of our image it also aligned everything to the center of the image. And then right here it's going to align to the right edge of target so that's the same as the left edge except of course it's going to align it to the right edge of our square. And then you've got the align top edge of target so that'll align everything to the top part of our square here. And then you've got align middle of target and that'll align everything vertically to the center of the square. And then you have align bottom of target so that will align everything to the bottom part of our square. So if I click that, everything snaps to that part of our square. So the next alignment option here is to align to the image. So instead of aligning everything to our first item that we selected, our first target item, it's gonna align everything to the composition as a whole. So that's going to be the entire background layer here or the entire uh, size of our composition, which is 1920 by 1080. So now if I click those same options, you'll see everything is going to align to our composition. So that time all of our layers align to the far left of our composition. And if I click align center of target, that'll align everything to the horizontal center. 
If I click the align right edge of target, it'll align to the right edge of my image. Align top edge of target, of course, will align to the top of the image or the composition. And then middle of target will align it to the vertical center. And then align bottom will align it to the bottom of our composition. And I'm doing all four of these objects at once. I can just click on one of these objects and that will just align that single object. But I just want to demonstrate that you can select multiple objects and perform all of these alignments uh, within GIMP. So the next option here is to align to a selection. So let's say you have a selection area that you've drawn within GIMP. So let's say I grab my ellipse select tool and draw an ellipse selection here. Well now I can align my target objects to that selection here. So I'll grab my alignment tool and let's say I just want to align the first object, object one, and the fourth object, which is this ellipse we drew, and that is object four. So I'm going to click on those two items. And let's say for whatever reason I want to align those to the selection area. Well now if I click the align center of target, you'll see these will be centered up based on the selection. And then also if I click align middle of target, these will be vertically centered to that selection as well. Or again, I can use any of the options here and that's going to align these objects relative to the selection. And of course we could do that with these other objects, but I'm just gonna skip aligning these two objects because it's not entirely necessary. But I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that selection area. So that applies to any selection area. So if I draw with this selection tool here, the free select or the rectangle select, it'll also work with that so long as you have a selection created. So I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that. And we'll go back to our alignment tool. So our next option is to align these relative to an active layer. So we have five total layers in our composition right now. We have four different objects and then we have the background layer. So if I grab my alignment tool and I click to make a target out of our first object here, and then we'll hold shift and click to create a target from the second object as well. So we've got object one, which is the black and then object two, which is the red. So two different target items. And now let's say we want to align these to the object four layer here, which is our green ellipse. So if I click on that layer, that object four layer is now our active layer. You can always tell it's an active layer because it's highlighted in blue. So now everything that we do is going to be aligned to this object four layer. So let's just go through our different alignment options here. So you can see all of them are performing the alignment relative to that object four layer. And part of this layer does go outside the boundary, which is why these objects are sort of hanging outside of the canvas edge here or the canvas area. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see here are the edges of our target items and of this active layer. And if I zoom in close, you can see that the uh, edges of the target item, which again are denoted by these squares, are aligned to the far left side of our active layer because we did have this align left edge of target option selected. So I'll zoom back out. And of course, if we change the active layer, so I'll click on object three as our active layer now, and we go through the different alignment options here, everything will then align to the object three layer there. So I'm gonna hold shift, click on our object three and our object four. I'm gonna change this back to align to the image and just align all these back to the center. And now let's move on to our next option, which is the active channel option. So if I click on that, this is going to align all of our objects relative to whatever active channel we have selected. So your channels are found in your channels dialog here. So this is your layers, channels, paths, undo dialog. So because this is an RGB image and it also has a layer of transparency, we have four different channels. We have red, green, blue, and alpha alpha representing the transparency channel. If I right click on, for example, the red alpha channel and I click duplicate channel, that's going to create that channel down here. And now if I click on that channel, that is our active channel and everything will align to that channel. And the red channel just covers the entire image. So this is just aligning everything pretty much to our image here. So this is not a very common thing to do with the alignment tool, but just know you do have that option. And by the way, I have this guide set here to the horizontal center of our image, just so you guys can see everything aligned to the center of our image. So let me just click on that red channel, copy and click here to delete this channel because I don't want to use it anymore. And now I'm going to come back over here to our layers panel. And the last option here is to align everything to an active path. So I'm going to come up here and grab my Ken Brewer Paths tool, and this tool was named after Ken Brewer, our Diamond Patreon supporter. And let's say I draw a path, and I'm going to draw this as straight as I can. And you can always use a guide if you want to draw a straight path. But now I've drawn a relatively straight path, 
And this will now be our active path since this is the last path we drew. Now I'm gonna grab my alignment tool and I'm just going to click on a couple of these items. So I'll hold shift and click. Actually, let me just click on all of these. And now with this set to relative to active path, remember our path was right up here. If I click on the alignment buttons here, you'll see everything will align to that path. And so we can click on any of these and they're all going to align relative to that path. And let me come over here to our pass dialog. If I unhide this path, and I drew another path while I was working on this tutorial. But you'll see that now our path is denoted by this red sort of highlight going across the path so you could see what these objects are aligning to. And let me just run through these alignment buttons again. So here you could see a little bit more clearly how these are aligning to that path. And if I drew another path here using our Ken Brewer paths tool, so let's say I drew it over on this left side, this should now be our active path, and you can see it actually is selected over here in our path dialog. So I'll come back over here to our alignment tool and just click on our first target object and then just shift click on our other objects here. And now I'm gonna click align relative to that path. And you'll see now that we have a new active path selected. They're no longer aligning to this path right here. They're aligning to the path over here on the left and I can unhide that path. So again, you guys can get a better look at this. So now we're aligning everything to that path. So let me just change this back to relative to image and I'm just gonna realign these to the center of our image. So I've navigated over here to our other composition for the next portion of the alignment tool, which is the distribute tool option. Distribute is used when aligning multiple target items and is especially useful when using the offset settings and the distribute targets evenly options. So with my alignment tool selected, I'm gonna use the rubber band method to select all four of these layers. So I'll just click and drag and make sure that I cover all four of these layers. And by the way, there are four images in here. I just have to hide these images to see the images below. I've just gone ahead and realigned these back to the center. And again, you can tell these layers are our target items because they have the squares in the corner. But the distribute option is going to work the same way as the align option. Again, unless you have the offset setting set or unless you're using these distribute targets evenly settings. So I'll start with the distribute targets evenly. So the first option here allows you to distribute them horizontally. And so when I click on this option, because I have four images and they all fit perfectly within the 3400 by 1280 composition I created because each one of these is 850 pixels wide, they should all four fit perfectly within our composition. So I'll go ahead and click that option. So you'll see they have now evenly distributed horizontally across this image. If I click the next option below, which is to distribute targets evenly in the vertical, what that's going to do is it's going to align all four of these so that they're equally spaced vertically speaking. So the top one is gonna be higher and then the bottom one is gonna be the lowest of the four. So I'll go ahead and click that option. And here you can see it's aligned these so that they're all equally spaced. And you'll see that kind of creates a staircase effect there. And if I click here to distribute these back to the vertical centers of targets, that's going to align these back to the center of our image. So now these are back where we want them. So now I'll show you guys the offset settings. So you have offset X and offset Y. And what this is gonna do is it's going to offset each of the photos from one another based on the value we set here. So if I set the offset X to 100, and then I align these to the left side of our image, you'll see the images are spaced 100 pixels apart from one another. And I actually have the background layer selected here, so let me undo that and make sure that I only have our four photos selected. So I'll hold shift and click on each of these four photos. And then again, let me distribute these to the left edge of our composition. So now you can see the first image is 100 pixels off from the left edge of our composition. And then each photo thereafter is 100 pixels spaced from the next. So that makes them evenly spaced 100 pixels apart. If I change this to 200 and do the same thing, you'll see that it'll space them out even further apart. And then that applies to the offset Y as well. So if I set this back to zero, and then I set the offset Y to 100 pixels, and then I distribute these to the left, that's not gonna do anything, but if I distribute them to the top, you'll see that uh, they are all spaced 100 pixels apart. And you can tell by the squares here, if I rearrange the order of the layers, you'd be able to see them a little bit better. So now you'll see they are 100 pixels apart. And you can also set these values to negative. So if you want them to either go past the left side of the canvas, let's say for instance, I set this to zero and then I set the offset to negative 100. Our first image is going to start off of the canvas a little bit. So I'll hit that distribute button 
And you can see there, the first image is a little bit out of the canvas and actually all of them are a little bit outside the canvas. And if I do that with the offset Y, that'll have the same thing happen. So I'll align this to the top there and you can see that these are going to uh, basically go off of the canvas here. So let me set these back to zero. So that was using the distribute left edges of target. If I use the right edges of target, it's actually gonna be the opposite. So if we set this to align to 100 and we align to the right side, it's actually going to do what it would have done to the left edges of targets had we set this number negative. So if I click on here, you'll see that this will align our objects off of the canvas here. And again, I just have to rearrange the order of the layers so you guys can see this. But if I set this value to a negative 100 and then align this to the right edges of targets, you'll see that'll align everything within the canvas area and all of our images are equally spaced apart. So the same applies to distribute bottoms of target. If I set this to zero and set the offset Y to 100, this will start with our items aligned below the bottom edge there. But if I set this value to negative 100 and I click to align this to the bottoms of targets, you'll see that now they start off of the canvas and they are equally spaced 100 pixels apart from the bottom of the images here. And then real quick, I'll just align these to the center with the offset so you guys can see what this looks like with the offset. So here are our photos aligned to the horizontal and vertical centers of targets or the horizontal and vertical centers of our image. And they are just 100 pixels off from the exact center here. If I set this to zero, you'll see that now everything is aligned the way it should be. So I'll just click to distribute targets again so that these are evenly distributed across our composition. But that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon and get some awesome GIMP extras in return. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.